welcome to episode 40 of Tales from Midnight Diary. My name's Gemma and I'm the dyer, designer, tutor, maker and chatterbox behind the Midnight Diary YouTube channel, um, obviously this podcast and hand dyed yarn company. If you're a new viewer, welcome. I hope you enjoy your time here. It's a standard issue podcast, so I take you through some works in progress, some things I've finished, something I've experienced, um, some general waffle as well that happens occasionally. And um, yeah, and if you're returning, you know what to expect by now. And it is lovely, as always, to have you here. Yeah, it was five runes 2018, five years ago, that I picked up my copy of the second draw down. And that means in August, uh, it will be six, five years since I first released a podcast as the project bag. I got to 50 ep regular episodes of that podcast. I think it was 49, 50 was going to be the next one. And then I rebranded the Midnight Diary, and now we're at episode 40. So we are fast chasing a hundred podcasts from me, which is slightly bonkers, but there we are. So how are you all? I'm loving seeing what you're all making. Um, don't forget, we are cracking those whips which, with the uh, crack those whips cal 23 hashtag is on the screen. Uh, it'd be really cool to see some more people using it. That'd be really fun. And then we can have a calorie. Uh, unless you're not cracking whips, maybe you're all just casting on with abandon, which is also very exciting. Um, speaking of casting on, I might have a confession to make later. <laughs> so yeah, let's start with finished objects. So I'm going to sort of point to my friend Mavis behind me and um, just put some b-roll in so I'm just going to kind of talk about what this is behind me as well I'm going to put some b-roll in so you can see it properly so here we go this is the Soho top by Sabina who is the designer behind Kadri who is becoming one of my favorite designers her projects are classic and easy to wear and size inclusive and have really interesting well thought through constructions and the patterns are really beautifully written as well. Um, this is my third Kadri that's, uh, that's on the needles, I'm off the needles now. And I've worked this one in Rowan Creative Linen. It's taken three hanks and it does fit me. It hasn't been blocked yet, but it will grow in length, which is never a bad thing. I absolutely loved the construction of this piece. It was very new, but not overly taxing and challenging. And the thing that really made it for me was the I-cord bind off and the I-cord applied edging on the neckline and the armholes. And obviously the I-cord bind off was on the hem. It just finished it so beautifully and gave it that structure and stability. Before that, it was a little bit saggy. Um, it's amazing what a good finish can do. The challenge for me, last time I showed this to you, she had some ends hanging out and she was looking a little bit droopy and a little bit unloved. And that's because I was scared of a new technique, which was grafting my eye cord edging together to make it seamless. However, I was very brave. And the other night I had some friends over and we were knitting together and it was really, really lovely. And one of them was being very good and finishing a project, doing the whole weaving in of ends and picking up stitches which if we're honest as makers, isn't necessarily our favorite thing to do. Uh, it's a bit like, I feel it's a bit like the back stitch in a cross stitch. When I get to the back stitch, I've already done the cross stitch. The picture's done, can't I be done already? But it really makes all the difference. It really does. Um, so it's totally worth doing. It's the same here. My favourite part of this design has to be though the faux sleeve seams down the sides which worked with slip stitches. I really really like them. They also feature on the Soho sweater which I've also got on the needles and I haven't forgotten about but I will work on at a point where I don't have a cold. Since I got Covid I have been left with a sensitivity uh, to yarn fibres which is beginning to make working here thoroughly miserable and I haven't been able to touch the kid silk haze that I've been working it in. Okay, I'm back in the room. I hope you enjoyed that little tour of my Soho top, which I adore. And it's gonna be living here on Mavis in the um, yarn shop for a wee while. And then here we go, we have a finished object. Now I know there are some people who are watching this and going, Gemma, you're really taking the mick calling one sock a finished object, but 
think about the purpose. These are not going to fit Robin for quite some time. I've deliberately done them bigger, which was a little bit emotional, not going to lie. Um, and so they're, they're going to their purpose. Each odd sock has a purpose in this shop as a sample sock. So it, for the purposes for which it's been made, this is finished. And this is the pheasant colourway, which I'd started last week when I showed you the podcast. I've cast on 52 stitches this time instead of 48. I always use the long tail cast on for my socks. It's got a nice stretchy cuff to go around a little t sturdy toddler legs. And I've also made the foot a bit longer as well because his feet are growing quite quickly and I want him to be able to wear these when this comes back from being a sample. I think I loved it in the ball. Let me show you it in the ball. I think it looks really pretty in the ball. But actually striped up when you can see all those colours separately. It's just so beautiful. I absolutely love it. Um, I think it might actually be my new favourite colourway and I'm imagining um, sleeves in a little preppy sweater for Robin down in, in pheasant colourway. Uh, to be honest, I'm imagining sleeves for me in a preppy sweater <laughs> down in the pheasant colourway. It's just, I think it's the earthiness and the depth of the colour that's in these ones that make me love them so much. I'm very, very happy bunny with these. So there's the ball. There's the sock. No one let me forget to put the ball band on that, please. Can you all like shout at your screen? I'll put in the comments, ball band. <laughs> I may do a pattern giveaway as a result. We shall see. So this is my works in progress board or my whip board. If you are new to this game, podcasting and make alongs and hose, foes, etc. A hoe is a half object, which that could be considered. It is a faux, a finished object. And this is my list of whips or works in progress. Now, I know this is a little bit marmitey, this board, but I love it and I'm not going to change doing it. So um, close your eyes and just listen if you don't like looking at it. So I wrote down all my works in progress, I think, in towards the beginning of June. It was kind of the halfway point of the year where I went through and reviewed all the whips that I had still on the needles or hooks. And it's only works in progress that I've bought here to the flat above the yarn dispensary where we're staying temporarily. And the intention was to reduce the whips on this board and I have crossed things off. But before I started recording, I had a little count of what's on here. And actually there are only 18 works in progress and there were 20 originally. So it has reduced, which is very exciting. I'm going in the right direction. Uh, so yeah, I've shown you the Shop Soho. Um, on here I've got the shop socks, so I've done the Brum Paradise, Blue Lagoon, Spring Green, Blue Tip, Pheasant and I'm currently on the Kingfisher, I shall show you that in a moment. And I also showed you last time Robin's finished mineral flax. So should we start with a tale of woe? Should we have a bit of a, a woe sandwich? We had the joy of the finished objects and we're going to have some joy of new cast on in a minute. But we'll have the tale of woe. The Harvest Cardigan, I cannot show you. Now, the deep irony of all of this is that I used to be an English teacher and I used to, for a living, tell people to read all the instructions carefully and pay attention and make sure you follow instructions as literacy is incredibly important. And this just went wrong from the moment I cast on. First of all, I did the provisional crochet cast on with the same colour yarn as I was knitting in. Fine until you want to undo it at the other end and you can't actually tell what you're undoing because it's all the same colour. That was my first mistake. Second mistake, I misread the pattern. So I, it's a guard stitch and on one side you have a stocking stitch kind of edge which then becomes like the, again, almost like a faux seam between the collar and the actual body of the project. So there's that. Whereas I did it on both sides. And I thought, well, I'm going to carry on because it doesn't matter. It's a design feature. So last night, Robin was in bed. My husband was gaming. And I had a couple of hours where I could just sit and knit for a bit. And I had a bit of decision paralysis about what to work on. I thought, you know what, I'm going to work on my harvest, harvest forever. So I pulled out the paper pattern, put on a podcast. I've been watching Laura Penrose's Vlogmas in July. Absolutely love She's just such a fantastic videographer 
and <clears throat> you know the different shots and angles it's just oh she's so good she's so good I had a bit of fun with videography in my vlogmas series but it's just something really wonderful about watching a well-produced podcast and yes I know the deep irony of me saying that when you're sitting through this but hey we can't all be roses all the time can we um what was I discussing that was it so I finished the bit of the collar that you have to knit first it is a free pattern so I'm not giving too much away it's the harvest cardigan by tin can it's so I finished the strip of collar and I was ready then to pick up and start adding the kind of body of the of the um or the yoke I guess so pick up all the way along um get to the end yep quite happy spend half an hour trying to undo my provisional cast on which was nigh on impossible um because I couldn't tell what I was undoing and I suddenly thought, oh, I wonder if I've dropped a stitch. Let me just count how many stitches I've got. And I had 10. And then I looked at the pattern and the highlighted stitch was cast on 14 stitches. So irony of ironies, I was casting this on at the same time as Kate, my friend who works with me um, here at the shop, was casting hers on. And I and she swatches. She's a good girl. She, she's like a proper knitter. She does things properly. And she swatches. And I did not swatch. It's for Robin. I'm not swatching. And so I forgot the swatch, but what I did do was I took a highlighter and I highlighted the size I'm making and I highlighted the instructions for the first page so I knew I was doing it right. So I counted across to the, to the six size and I highlighted the cast on stitches for the six size, 14, and then I cast on 10, so the first size, newborn. So when I realised this, I thought, oh, okay, so I've got two like stocking stitch edges where I shouldn't have one I should have a raw garter stitch edge and a stocking stitch edge right okay I can live with that I have not got the right number of stitches fine it's the collar I can live with this I can, he can just have a narrower collar it will be fine and then as I looked at it I thought when do I move to the bigger size needles because these were the four mil and then the pattern so you need four mil and five mil and I just scanned through and I couldn't see it and I looked back at the beginning and the first instruction with larger needles cast on 14 for my case stitches <sighs> there was nothing to do at this point other than frog it and again if that's new to you it's a kind of jovial term which is meant to make things feel a bit better I think when you're feeling completely rubbish for ripping back your work because you rip it rip it rip it <laughs> i did not feel in the slightest bit jovial when i was ripping this back and i actually flung it into the corner of the room it, so it is really in the naughty corner I mean, it's not it's here but i don't know why but look and this is how tired i am i've brought the, the ball of yarn that i had started working with and it, it's all there it's all there well <laughs> So that's my tale of woe and it's just going to show it doesn't matter how many years you've been knitting i've been knitting for 30 years 31 years now really um pretty consistently i wasn't one of these people that kind of had a break either i always was knitting something from that very young age buildings creaking oh no sounds like my son is asleep in bed however all is not lost because i have three new cast ons for you well, that means 19 whips, not 18. So it's still one less, one fewer. One fewer, one fewer. I'm not even going to try in English today. So I have started and I'm down to the heel flap on my next sock, which is the Kingfisher colourway from West Yorkshire Spinners. I am doing this on Magic Loop, but my preferred method is two circulars. Um, and I'm going to do a little video of ways to whip, knit socks um, when I'm settled in Devon. I'll add it to my two minute Tuesday to show you how to set up socks in various ways. Now this colourway is... So this is this colourway. And again, it's very clearly Kingfisher, but actually you wouldn't necessarily recognise that there are so many different blue stripes in it. I wasn't sure if it was just going to be a two colour, but actually it is one, two, three, four still. So we've still got four 
colours and your flecky bit in the middle. And I'm really enjoying it. It's not going as fast as the others because I've been quite busy this week. Uh, but yes, I'm down to the heel flap on that one. We had a lovely girl called Alexa come in. Um, she's just graduated. She's about to start her teaching qualification and she's a maker and she wanted to knit. Initially, it was a throw she was after, but she really liked the prism, not prism, the grain shawl by Tin Can Knits, which is another one of their simple collections, another three pattern. Um, and we'd done it in retreat as well as another chunky by Byron Mew, who sadly now are no longer functioning. And she really liked it. She chose cream for hers instead of doing it all in cream. And then she popped back in because it was her first time doing the guards that Tab cast on. And again, I'm going to do a little two minute video on how to do that as well. So she said, have you got time to help me? I was like, I'm doing admin. Of course, I've got time to help you. So we sat down and I grabbed some needles and some yarn from uh, the teaching box in retreat. And I cast it on with her and helped her with the stitch marker placement and to get the placement for the yarn over the spine. If I stretch it out, you can see. It's top down and it's two triangles essentially you're creating with your yarn overs. Um, and I'm doing mine in three colours of retreat. So I've got the darker grey, which I think is called Soothe or Soul, I'm not sure. And then the lighter grey and the cream. So it's going to be smallish, it's only going to be three colours. It's not going to be as big as it might otherwise have been. Um, but I so enjoyed starting it that I just carried it on. It's really nice garter stitch, it's easy to memorise and it's it's good. I don't know what to do so I'm going to knit knitting. So yeah, I'm onto the second colour of this. I'm showing it to you back to front. I'm onto the second colour and this is going to be for the shop. So this will be a made to sell item um, rather than hanging around forever as a demonstration piece. We are coming towards the winter season we are increasingly asked for things that are ready made and um, sometimes it's nice to be able to provide them so yeah so there's that my third new cast on um, someone a friend of mine is having a baby which is very very exciting and uh, yeah they've just shared it uh, on social media and a few of us wanted to cast on for this baby and I decided to knit the Playdate cardigan by Tin Can Knits. So this appears to be a, play, a Tin Can Knits appreciation podcast. Um, that might be the title. And I bought, for the purpose of this, the Flower Crown colourway from Stranded Dye Works. And I just adore this colourway. I love everything about it. And I love how it's knitting up. I've only done the rib, I couldn't find the right size needles next. But I just absolutely love the colour and how it's knitting up. So this is a very knitworthy couple with a very knitworthy little bump expected and um, they're quite happily shopping for baby and with my experience I don't really believe in the whole jinxing things so I've obviously taken their lead and as they are you know, going going the same way, we're happily casting on. And so that is the Playdate cardigan. It's the first size um, so, and it's all done in one from bottom up. So I'm probably going to have enough left over of this to do um, the mum a little something as well. So she's got something to keep because this only took 50 grams when I did the first size, the 0-3 month size for Robin. And I was looking back at pictures because I thought this is so tiny. I was looking back at pictures and I thought, how, how is he that tiny? And you look at him now, he's so tall and toddling around on his, or he doesn't really toddle, he kind of rushes everywhere now. He's, he's got his speed up on his little sturdy toddler legs. Um, nine times out of ten shouting, go, go, go! <laughs> uh, he's, he's always in a hurry, that kid. And then you just stop and pause for a moment and think, gosh, he was so tiny. You were so, so tiny. He really was a little dot. And yeah, I can't believe how the time goes. So it's absolutely lovely to be knitting for a new, uh, much loved, much longed for baby. And knowing that oh, it's just given me such pleasure to knit. It really is. And I hope it will give them a lot of pleasure as well. Um, as two things, I'll either make something for mum as well. Or I will give the leftover yarn to mum to make something 
um, to decide what she wants to do with. So those are my three new cast offs, <laughs> considering I'm not meant to cast anything on. And I have. Yeah, I mean, the sock's OK, because I'm always going to have a sock on the go for dog walking. But yeah, so summer will. Ooh, that peel. Summer Wool Show. Should we talk about that? I went to the Summer Wool Show today with my team, which is formerly known as Fibre East. It was the first yarn show I ever went to back in 2017. And in 2018, as I said already, I launched my podcast and it started with a Fibre East vlog kind of thing or a, a recap. It wasn't a vlog. I wasn't vlogging at that point. Um, and I picked up the second drawdown. So it kind of launched the Project Bag podcast as it was then. So it's quite special. And so to be able to go with my team just before I finish work here, it was just so lovely to have some happy days and happy memories. And as you can see, I went back to Truly Hooked. So let me show you what I bought. I didn't buy much because I shouldn't really be buying any yarn at all, but everything I've brought is actually for Robin. <laughs> I love this bag from Truly Hooked. I think I now have one of every style that she does. So I absolutely love it. And it's also Verity's penultimate show. She's stopping doing in-person shows after Yarndale. So first up, this is Trance, which is her charity colourway in memory of her dad. Um, Verity's dad, very sadly, um, passed away um, just, just before, or well, around the time she started Truly Hooked and uh, this is a charity colourway and I've had it on most bases and I, this is the Aaron and I thought do you know what that is going to be a hats and gloves for Robin for this winter so that's number one we also bought in the capacity of yarn dispensary uh, the boot clay yarn to try because we do stock Verity's yarn here at the yarn shop um, if you're new I run a yarn shop at the moment which is where we are I don't just have a weird setup in my bedroom <laughs> um, although sometimes my house does feel like a yarn shop um yes yeah, so we bought this to try i thought we'd give that a go um and it's squishy and it's gorgeous and yeah we're gonna give we're gonna give this a go so this is called lot dark and long and i then saw madrigal yarns and i'm for, excuse the rustling because this all kind of got a bit squished and not in the way you want is it that way around? It's that way around. And this is his Elves Picnic Enchanting Greens Colour Fun Pack. So there we are. It cost me £30. Um, I'm not going to get it out of the plastic just yet. But this is destined... I might do some B-roll. I'm going to stop rustling it. This is destined to become a so faded pint-sized for Robin. So the Andrea Maori pattern. I'm going to do a little faded sweater for him it will probably have um plain arms or something so I don't know as I've got enough to do everything but I wanted to at least start um so yeah that's very exciting as well I really really like that uh, so yeah that's Robin's next project and then finally I bumped into Alma's Witch Witchcrafty Lady I haven't seen her in ages it was so nice to see her and to say hello and to buy her yarns now this is see I, I usually buy fiber but I've given my spinning stuff away I've accepted that that is just a rabbit hole I don't have time to dive down right now um and it's actually been spun and it's beautiful and it was well received so I'm really pleased about that but this is her hand dyed yarn and this is alpaca merino and silk and they were only 10 pounds each which really shocked me because they're so so beautiful I wasn't going to complain though, I would snapped up both skeins and they're going to be uh, Robin's Christmas jumper or a wintry jumper for Robin which I will put a label in saying Alan please don't wash this <laughs> but I just love that colour, I did, there was kind of almost like an apple green and I considered striping it for him and doing him a stripy green, a stripy, a stripy sweater but then I would have just left one red skein and three green skeins and I thought actually thinking about re about selling you know in her next shop update I thought actually having four of the green is probably more useful um and I just love this red it's kind of it's really rich it comes up kind of orange I think on screen 
but so I'm going to love make, using it and Robin is hopefully going to love wearing it. So I'm not sure which pattern I'm going to use to do that. I might do a flax light because he hasn't got enough flaxes in his life clearly. Uh, and, but they do suit him, they do suit him. I just need to swatch this time because my gauge is so off on his normal flaxes. Yep, Gemma said she needs to swatch. <laughs> so that's my little haul. It is remarkable really how much I've changed in my buying habits and my making habits. I never used to shop and think of a project before I made a purchase. That just wasn't the way I worked but I think I think because uh, my circumstances are forcing me to be a bit more frugal, a bit more responsible, um, and because we're moving and space is at a total premium, I think that kind of forced me to think a bit differently about how I was going to buy yarn this time. And uh, it's not a bad thing. I'm quite excited knowing I've got projects and I want to actually do them, which is very exciting. Uh, I want to be better at working with the yarns I buy from indie dyers because as an indie dyer myself, yes, it's amazing when someone buys your yarn, but what you really want, and to be honest, need is people to be using it and sharing it in the moment, not when you've retired the colourway two years later when they finally stop stroking it in their stash. So I'm going to try really, really hard and do a bit more of that and actually use what comes in quickly so actually it can help. You know, I know I've got not got a huge platform, but it's all about, you know, sharing projects and ideas and inspiration, isn't it? So, yeah, so that's that. So I hope um, I'm going to put a little bit of vlog footage at the end of this um, from the show. I started vlogging OK and it soon fell apart because I was just too busy squishing yarn, chatting to my team, chatting to the vendors. It was a really, really lovely day out. And here we are. We've come full circle. I don't know when my next podcast is going to be. We are getting very close to moving day. I don't have an exact day yet, but it is getting very, very close. I don't know how much making time I'm going to have. I'm training my new manager at the shop starting tomorrow. And that's very exciting. And we've got stock take and a team training day and there's all sorts of wonderful things going on. So I don't know how much time I'll have. But yeah, I really, really hope that you have enjoyed this episode. And I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to use the hashtag crack those whips cal 23 or crack those whips 23. I'll figure out which one it is and I'll put it, put it below. And then I might even do a description box if you're lucky. And yeah, let me know what you're working on. And have you been to any yarn shows this year? Have you discovered any new makers? Um, are you better at me? Um, how do you shop? Are you better at me? No, that's not even a thing, Gemma. Oh my days. <laughs> It's business as usual here. I'm going to go up and sit in it for a bit. Have a lovely evening. Bye. Bye.